Hello and welcome back to another episode of Boys Gone Wild. This is the third week. We're really into it and your boy's feeling it. Your boy's feeling it hard. Um, I had a pretty wild weekend. Um, your boy went wild. Your boy went wild. Okay. I think this pod is sinking into my veins because I went up to London. Um, I, didn't, I wasn't. I wasn't being bad. I had a lot of stuff I needed to get because I moved down here. I didn't bring enough stuff, so I went up to London, uh, met up with my girlfriend, and my hair's blonder now. I dyed my hair because it was going to be this or it was going to be a fucking shave in my head, and I don't look good with a shaven head. Okay, the only semi decent thing about my hair is my hair. Is my head? Is my hair? Oh fuck! My the only decent thing about my head is my hair. So it was going to be one of the two things. My hair's slightly blonder now. It probably doesn't even look that much blonder because I was trying to bleach it. It didn't work. So I'm. it's yellow. I've got some extra clothes, as you can see. Uh, it was just wild, okay? And then I came back and I'm a little bit drunk. Legend? Um, and I'm going to level with you because this podcast is about honesty. Um. Uh, I didn't, this is not, I haven't planned, I don't know what this episode's about, okay, and this is not going to happen regularly, um, but I'm doing these five times a week, so you can go fuck yourself, alright, I'm doing five of these little fuckers a week, so sometimes there will be a podcast that's about nothing, okay, sometimes I will just talk out my ass if I please, it's my podcast, go fuck yourself, I didn't have enough, basically, I know, that I've got loads of people I want to talk about, who I've planned, but they take thought and preparation. I'm not really in the zone to... Because I don't want to waste an episode when I'm in this sort of mood. When I'm a, t- a little bit drunk. Um, uh, your boy's gone too wild, basically. Your boy's gone a little bit too wild. His hair's a different colour. He's feeling different. He's had a c- too many, couple too much naughty juice. And now he doesn't know who he's going to talk about. But by the end of this episode, we're going to find the boy who's gone wild. Okay, so I'm just going to... I'm going to see if I can talk out my ass. That's the deal, okay? Sometimes it's just going to be a shit fest. And knowing you you perverts, you're going to bloody love it. But, you know, I'm trying to do some self-care. How are you guys coping with quarantine? Because I've been reading a lot of shit. Have you seen all this stuff that loads of, like, kind of woke celebrities are resharing these articles about how, like, you should feel no pressure to be all productive. This can be a very stressful time for a lot of people. And there's a huge pressure for you to be productive. You should just be allowed to do nothing. You should be able to just sit on your ass and watch TV. And you should be feel fine about that. And so many people are patting themselves on the back for coming up with this idea. That it's like... Everyone's feeling a bit pressured to finish that novel. You know, write that script. You know, I don't know what other people do. Um, and there's been this big push to like, just remember, like, you don't have to do anything. If it stresses you out, you just need to do nothing. And... How I feel about that is, I do agree that you should not feel guilt. This is a great time to not feel guilty about doing nothing, but I don't think it's healthy. Like I know a lot of people who are following these kind of advice, and basically, I don't think you should do that because I think it's impossible. So I think if you're just sitting around playing video games, uh, you shouldn't feel guilty about that at all. That's fine. You should definitely do that um but i don't think you should do that actually because it's impossible for you not to feel guilty do you know what i mean be productive because i don't believe you can not be productive and not feel like shit you know if you can not be productive and not feel like shit fucking be my guest read all share all the huffington post articles saying uh, about self-care and don't do anything but f- amazing but I don't know how you can do it because it stresses me the fuck out just doing nothing. So my advice uh, to you guys is, yeah, just be productive and do some shit because you'll feel good. Because um, self-help is a wild thing. Self-help is a wild... I, I found it hysterical, the kind of progression of self-help in the kind of general cultural conversation. Because it, sort of it sort of went from being about... Um, Self-help came, kind of came in with a lot of mental health awareness. And the, the opening tenets of it, I'm sort of agree with, which is like, 
you should take care of yourself before taking on the world it's like maybe if you're feeling super anxious about going to a party or something and like just take care of yourself run yourself a bath really and like learn how to take care of yourself first it started off with that as being sort of like the main ideas and, and i think that's i agree with that you people need to learn how to take care of themselves or else they'll get so much worse but it <laughs> the amount of people i know who have taken self-care and just ran away with it. Do you know what I mean? There's like people who have jumped on the idea of self-care. And now it means they have no responsibilities. They can do what the fuck they want. And it's all in the... Like there's people who are like... I, was, I had a job interview. But I was feeling quite nervous about it. So I didn't go because it was self-care. So I ran myself a bath. Read a book. And I feel so much better. It's like, look, don't pat yourself on the back. You know, self-care is important. But I don't like this idea that you can be some sort of like hero to yourself by just not doing anything you need to do you know there's just it, it, it's just funny how quickly it just nosedived like the first people to talk about self-care it started off well and then everyone was like wait you mean i can do what the fuck i want and it's it's a good thing to do all right then i've been in this bar for three weeks i haven't gone to work for a, a two months because self-care self-care sunday I'm going to day drink from now on. Self-care. There's a weird sort... I, d I don't like a lot of the self-care culture because it's just too narcissistic and it just makes things worse a lot of the time. But, you know, over quarantine, it is you self-care is important to a certain extent. But I don't think you should be encouraged to just do nothing. I just don't think... I don't know how you have the capacity to be all right with that. You could read an article and think, fuck it, I'm just going to play video games all day and not feel guilty about it, which is in your rights. But I don't, I th bet you'll finish that day feeling like shit. I just don't, I think we're too programmed to not, you know, to feel like shit after that. And I don't think it's helpful. Um, and I, I've been playing, I've been playing video games uh, a bit. Um, I got Uncharted 4 uh, online for free because the PlayStation Store was doing a doing a discount, uh, and it's like a fucking it's like a fucking uh, you're sort of like this Indiana Jones sort of figure who's like a he's like a treasure hunter, but it's like modern day, and you go on adventures and you steal shit, and it's like really it's like very narrative based. But the fourth one was the only one that was free online, so I feel really like I've missed out on one, two, and three because he keeps making like inside jokes and like private references about the other his all his other adventures and i'm getting fomo i'm on i'm doing a virtual adventures i'm climbing up rocks i'm drop like i'm going all over the world i'm scuba diving i'm like shooting fucking you know russian mafia and he still managed to make you feel like i'm missing out he's because he'll, he'll meet someone from an, an old from one of the old games i'm like oh do you remember that time when we had that orgy in Spain. I'm like, oh, for fuck, when was this? Why wasn't I there? So it just takes me completely out of being, because I'm meant to be that character when I'm playing that game. I'm meant to be the fucking, what's his, Drake, um, when I'm playing Uncharted 4. But whenever he's fucking chumming with his, his, his kind of brother and talking about how he, like, I don't know, uh, killed the Queen of Sardinia. And I'm like, for fuck's sake. That sounds sick. I wish I was there. Literally, one, one level, not really level, one moment in the game is him walking through his study just looking at old ornaments from old quests and then just reminiscing. Like, oh, I remember when I found this old uh, Aztec head. God, that was a close one. I don't know what you're talking about, Drake. But I think I've realised why video games are lame. Because... I think people who play video games, they feel like people don't understand video games. As if as if we don't know that they're amazing and the most fun you can have. Do you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people, you hear people talking about video games, like people who are gamers, and they'll be like, you don't understand, it's a real art form, it's incredible the worlds they build, they're incredibly fun, they're really sociable, it's just the best time. It's like, what, you don't understand, we know that. We know that they're like the best thing ever. 
there's nothing more fun than a great video game. They're literally designed to be the most fun they can possibly be. They're games. But why they're lame is because they're too much fun. There's something lame about... And it kind of goes back a bit to the self-care. There's something almost lame about enjoying yourself that much. There's something almost unethical about that level of hedonism. You know? Like, playing... FIFA playing that, that's fucking great. It's an incredible, the games have got so good, they're so much fun. But sitting there doing that, it's just too easy. It's too easy is what it is. It's too easy to sit down and have a great time. That is uncool. What, that's, I think that's the fundamental reason why they're uncool. Being a gamer is uncool because it's too easy. Actually, it's really hard to get to level 70. No, it's lame as shit. It's lame as shit. And the reason it's lame as shit is because it's too easy. So I watched that show, Master of None. You know Master of None? Because a lot of people have been gassing it up to me and saying like, oh, you've got to watch Master of None. It's so cool. There's like, they've got like an, an Asian dude in there and they've got like a black girl who's also, guess what, a lesbian. Uh, Aziz Ansari, he's like one of the first Indian male leads in a comedy. Like, it's incredible. Like every single positive trope they they normally talk about Master of None is how well represented it is. So I thought, fuck it, I'll give it a go. First off the bat, it's shot beautifully. It's an incredible looking show. And the cinematographer on that show did all 20 episodes and they're all fucking gorgeous. He's the real star. But the show is utter wank. I really, it really pissed me off master of none because it sums up everything i hate about that sort of liberalism just the wetness of it all it pissed me off because i don't think i thought it was embarrassing to call it a comedy because basically the premise of the show is and zizan sari is sort of playing himself but he's this sort of failing actor who seems to have endless amounts of money okay He's this short Indian dude who has endless amounts of money, even though he's a failing actor. So they show some sort of failure and conflicts with the fact he's not getting roles and he keeps getting typecast and racist things. Um, but he still seems to just live in a great house, constantly eat out and just live this incredible life in New York. All his friends are young, hip and cool. But there's no... For me, a comedy hero or like a comedy protagonist, like a Partridge, like a David Brent, like a Michael Scott, there needs to be some real aspect of failure or underdog. But you just watch that show and it's just as he's on sorry showing off. Like he's like, oh, look, I'm short and Indian, so I'm an underdog. But the rest, I'm just going to say, fuck it. I bang beautiful women constantly. The show's constantly about him just having sex with the most beautiful women. He writes and directs the show. That's creepy as fuck. He gets Claire Danes. There's one episode where Claire Danes arrives. As soon as she came on screen, I was like, okay, clearly Aziz Ansari is going to have sex with her because Aziz Ansari writes the show and he's like, oh, can we do a... All right, guy, writers, can we do an episode where um, I have sex with Claire Danes? I don't know what it's going to be about, but just that's, that's what I want to do. And then she comes in, he has sex with her. No way would he be able to get Claire Danes in real life. But in his little world where he's just uh, this charming kind of Lothario and like occasionally has aw slightly awkward conversations. But it's just this endless barrage of him just saying how great he is and how there's one episode that might be one of the most bizarre episodes of TV I've ever seen. I think it's called Austin where he's met this new girlfriend and they're getting on great. There's no problems. They're just getting on amazing. And then one time, they suggest they go to Austin to take a look around Austin. So they get on a plane, they fly to Austin, and they have a great time. It's just Aziz and Sari and this girl just having an amazing time. They just go to cool places. They have really flirty banter. They get on really well. It's just constantly, it's like a perfect relationship. And you're con I'm, I'm watching it and I'm thinking, all right, when are they going to introduce some form of conflict or anything no just carries on he keeps doing witty one-liners she keeps laughing it's just going from restaurant to restaurant and it's this endless montage of happiness i'm looking at it, it's like it's like, like a 25 minute episode and we're like 20 minutes in and i'm like when the fuck is this gonna have any form of narrative or a story or any so something funny actually happen and then 
they're on their way back and they're they're late for a plane and then he's like no i need to stop off at this restaurant and get the special sauce i like because he has this special sauce that he loves that that from one of the early times that a restaurant he stops they get the sauce and then because he got he got the sauce they miss the flight and then she's really pissed off at him and doesn't sit next to him on the plane i'm like okay there's something maybe interesting here maybe the the episode was about how uh even if you had the most wonderful time something small and insignificant can flip it all in its head and i thought it was going to end with something quite poignant and shocking but no is he's sorry goes to the person sitting next to his girlfriend says can i switch with you they switch he starts he, he just has a couple of witty lines and then she's in love with him again easy they arrive back in new york and they say let's go grab a bite to eat they go out and eat food again it was insane I think the next episode, literally, the plot was this guy comes up to them. He's with his girlfriend and some other friends and just shakes his hand and doesn't shake his girlfriend's hand. And then she points out how that's sexist to him. And he's like, oh, that's not sexist. So he thinks it's not sexist. She thinks it is sexist. And the whole episode is her going, actually, I think it is sexist. And then by the end of it, as he's sorry, he's like, you know what? I've listened to you. I've learned from your lived experience because you're a woman, so you understand this more. And now I've taken that on board, and I think you're right. So it was just a, it was just an episode about how great a feminist he is and how much he listens, which makes it, which is why when I read the whole bullshit thing about his um, Me Too thing, like the glorified bad date that was posted on a website called Babe.net, if that happened to anyone, I'd be like, this is bullshit. He should not have his career ended. But When you do a show where the whole premise is about how much of a great feminist you are, then it does start to really change it when it comes out that you are fucking creepy as shit on dates. You know, it just made me feel all fucking weird. Because I don't think what he did was at all bad. No, it was bad, sorry. I don't think what he did was worthy of him having that sort of backlash. I think that was completely overblown. But it does, admittedly, show that he's a cunt you know he must be a massive cunt anyone who writes a show is sickly as master of done which is just him going hey woman i'm gonna respect you hey what's that sorry uh guys can we be quiet because there's a woman trying to talk sorry i'm a male feminist go on what are you saying if it's just a show of him just fucking either being the wokest man alive or banging claire danes and then it comes out that he's fucking creepy on dates. Then yeah. Fuck him. Well, I guess this this episode's going to be about fucking Aziz Ansari then. Uh, I apologise. These are, You're going to get a few of these. You're going to get a few episodes where I just talk exclusively out my arsehole. It's going to happen um, because I'm doing five a week. But tomorrow will be a great episode i've got a brilliant week planned um they're all the reason i'm not wasting them when i'm in this fucking state is because they're too juicy so until then you um stay safe i'll see you tomorrow